Oh, right, there we go. A flashlight? There's only been no flashlight. I feel like I'm holding a lighter. Who was that? This is my first playthrough of this game. It's a it's an indie horror game on Steam. Right now it's two ninety nine. I bought it a while ago, I think, when it was on sale. But uh I haven't had a chance to play it until now, so we'll see what happens. Oh, you suck. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a cat. Okay, so... Alright, so it lights up if you can interact with it. Oh, the desk had a small computer and some papers on it and a single drawer. I didn't want to snoop, but did I open the drawer? Yeah. Receipts, pens, and a blurry photo. Look like a store of some kind. Why does this look so familiar? I really shouldn't have been going through this stuff, getting my fingers every well, my fingerprints everywhere. Whatever. Don't be a chump. Blood on the wall. It smelled fresh and sickening. I realized there was blood on my shoes and pants. Oh man, I had to get out of there. Really? If that man died in the hallway, what was the blood doing there? Whatever, we gonna find out. Oh, I thought I peed myself. Not gonna lie, just throwing that out there. I noticed that I limped as I moved down the stairs. How did I hurt my leg, I wondered. All I could really recall was coming home, seeing Rachel. I was upset. She looked afraid. I shook my head and tried to clear it. <sighs> anyway, I should head downstairs, try to find a way out. Oh no, boy, we exploring. The bookshelf was full of books on local history and hunting. Okay, so... Seemed like the owner of the house really knew the area. There were scribbles of all kinds on random scraps of paper and notes about some kind of water tower. Did it mean the one by the old train yard? Maybe he did. An old dining table covered in dirty dishes for two people. There were dozens of beer cans and other liquor bottles among the dishes. The smell was turning my stomach. Oh, pussy. What's this? A black and white photo looked like the man upstairs and his wife, I guess. There was no reason for me to keep this. Did I take it? I guess not. Yeah, let's take it. First playthrough. We're gonna take it. I slipped a photo into my pocket. Maybe this will help me find some answers. Yeah, why not? <sighs> we don't want to go downstairs yet. What the hell is that? A thin gray mouse was stuck in a trap. It looked frantic but exhausted. Did I free it? Yeah, let's help him. A collection of rusty tools. These look like they'd seen a lot of use and were caked in damp, smelling dirt. Why were they in a shed? <sighs> I don't know, buddy. A photo similar to the old one I picked up. It had been moved a lot. There seemed to be a switch behind it. Did I push the switch? Yes, you did. It depressed smoothly into the wall. I heard a faraway click somewhere. No, I can't take these, right? Uh, no. The door looks like a little nipple.
Maybe it's downstairs. I don't know. What there? I mean, I don't know why it would click downstairs. Yeah, I guess so. Nipple door. That's all I'm gonna see when I see those doors. It looked like how my clothes were dirty and torn and there was mud caked all over my shoes. The front door was blocked by a pile of furniture. I knew I had to find another way out. <sighs> that switch in the wall worked. The door had been unlocked. Hey! Hey, wait. We weren't even down here. How did you know that that's what it opened? Is that a cage? Very creepy. Well, we're not going there yet. The door was taped and seemed to be locked. By the smell, I guessed it led to the kitchen. It gave the door a hard shove in. To my surprise, it cracked open. Oh, hey! There were sheets of paper all over the kitchen table. It looked like a series of names were written down. <sighs> But they were too smudged to read. I could only make out a few of the notes. Key card. Probably locker. Uh, last one, I promise. It didn't make much sense at the time. What an odd house. The bathroom was spotless. Everything had been wiped to a sheen. I wondered if it was the man's wife who did the cleaning or him. Probably his wife. There was a photo development tray lying on the floor. Some leftover negatives were sticking out, but they were pretty blurry. Oh my god, guys, I can't stop yawning. <sighs> I thought I saw what looked like treetops. It seemed odd that the tray had been left there considering how clean the rest of the bathroom was. I can't pick it up. I, we got that already. What are you doing? Oh, I hate this. It's like once you initiate that, you can't get rid of it. Alright, let's go down those stairs. Oh, the ladder. Whatever. You guys know what I mean. The box looked heavy, but there were marks on the floor. It had obviously been moved before. Okay, we got that. Yeah, because we don't have much of a choice. Uh, and it finally gave. Uh, there was a ladder going on the ground where the box was. A dank smell rose from the passage. Yes, we climbed down it. I looked at the photo I found in the house. The uh, couple looked distant like they didn't want to be in the same picture. I wondered where the wife was. My leg was in terrible shape, but I had to get out. Uh, I wonder if we'll find her ass down here. Footprints in the dirt looked like more than one kind and a lot of traffic. What kind of fucking house is this? Rude. Uh, it was an old map of the town. Places all over were marked. The industrial area near the river, various houses, and even the water tower near the old rail station. The guy upstairs must have done this, but what was his interest in the water tower? Newspaper clippings from the local paper, bleh, paper. They were all about murders in town over the last few years. Wait, there were photos. Photos of our house? What the hell was that about? Maybe I should have looked around more. Tried to find some kind of information. But we searched the whole damn house! A work table covered in papers, dirt, and a handgun. I hated guns. I didn't take... Hell yeah, we're taking this gun! I tucked a small handgun into my pocket. Its weight was somehow reassuring. What kind of question is that? I hated guns that I take it. Just slap the shit out of you, bro. Wake up in some funky ass house, you're not gonna take a gun? Blech. Some kind of homemade rack slung together with poorly cut wood and rope. It was cracked with old blood. Somebody didn't actually use that, did they? Probably. What's that? 
Rusted hooks like the kind you'd find in a butcher hung from the ceiling. Find in a butcher. What does that mean? Maybe a butcher shop. They look pitted and worn from heavy use. That man upstairs, did he do this? Maybe he did. Maybe he's into freaky S&M. Crudely made shelves. They look like they were holding cans of some kind of corrosive. The labels were worn and slick, but I could still see the warnings. Mm, we're not going down yet. It looked like a cage. It was small, but there was something coating the bottom. Something wet. Could it be blood? <laughs> that place was getting worse all the time. I knew I had to keep moving. Whatever. Wait. Da -da. Let's check the other side real quick. The dust looked old and was caked with grime. On it was a stack of old faded paper covered with what looked like names. They were scratched out, and illegible notes were written beside them in faded blue ink. I could only make out a few letters. None of that made any sense. Douchebag. Is that... is that bones? There looked to be bones half dug into the ground and the remains looked old. The faded clothes that stuck up amongst the dirt looked familiar. They looked like the clothes that woman was wearing in the photo I found. Was this the man's wife? Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Oh, weird little corpse. Maybe you should start digging. But that's right, we didn't want to take the tools. Yes. Some kind of old boxes. They look like they were years old. Wait a minute. These boxes had old clothes in them. Clothes I remember throwing out after Rachel and I moved to, to town. What the hell were they doing there? I don't know, man. How did I go from being in a house to being in a cave? I remember noticing the broken ladder. I had to be careful. It looked to be a long way that I jumped down. No, we're not gonna fucking jump down then. There was a rope hanging there. I wasn't sure how sturdy it was. Did I take it yet? Maybe that rope would make that broken ladder easier to descend. Oh, you're a genius. Hey, hey, hey. I want to check out that body. Well, fucking tease. Wait, what's that? Oh. The rope I fell would have let me climb down the broken ladder safely. Did I climb down? Yeah, let's climb down then. I could hear a faint hum and the smell from before started to get worse. A bunch of old newspapers, wheat pressed, wait, wheat pasted together? A message had been hastily smeared on a keep out danger due to cave in. Whatever. We're going through the nipple door and we're finding out what's up. I could still feel the faint impression of the rope I had slid down as I pressed against the heavy metal door. It was probably for the best that I hadn't jumped. The ache in my leg was bad enough as it was. If I could have, though, I would have run straight out of those awful tunnels. Who would keep such a place? <sniffs> At least I thought I had found that old handgun. It seemed to work, and from the smell of it, it had been used already. I kept the gun in my pocket. It seemed a familiar weight there. An exposed ventilation staff. Maybe somebody crawled through there, but it was so high up that it must have been a sore landing. There were... There was dirt on the ground, it looked wet, and there was grass smeared within it. I could hear a faint trickling sound like water. What was that? 
A kitchen knife covered in drying blood. Thinking about it made me sick. I didn't even want to touch it. Did I take the knife? Yes. I slipped the knife in my boot since I had the gun in my pocket. Did I really need all this? Yes, you do. I want to check out what's up that ladder real quick. Disgusting. It was a mess of filthy garbage bags. There were rips and tears in most of the bags. What looked like an old videotape was sticking out. Did I take the tape? Yeah, let's take it. I wasn't sure what I hoped to discover with the tape, but I took it anyway. Yes, you did. Check out this door. I don't want to leave yet. Are we in a prison? I wasn't sure what those valves were for. Did I turn it anyway? Uh, let's wait a minute. Let's check out the other doors first. The door was locked. There was a, rust, a, a musty smell from inside. The ugh. Yeah, okay, I didn't hit it again. I wasn't sure, but I thought it was some kind of regulator. I had no idea how it worked. I wasn't sure what those valves were for. Did I turn it anyway? Yeah, just turn it. Whatever these valves did, this one wasn't pumping water anymore. I guess we'll turn all the valves and see what happens. Right? Yeah, why not? Yep. Yep. Wait. Oh, I don't know what they do. That's kind of weird, but whatever. one like trippy it just happens twice whenever you hit it turning those valves must have drained the water that was in this room there was a ladder I could reach how did you know there was water in this room look like the water drained out of that grate in the wall The safety poster had definitely seen better days. How old was that facility? The door was locked. I could see a faint light within. Okay. I didn't hit it twice. Is that that officer? No, a sore worker. Woo! I found another dead body, a sore worker. By the wounds all over his face and body, I figured he'd been stabbed repeatedly. There was a key ring sticking out of the man's pocket. Yes, you took it. I thought about the knife I had found with some disgust as I carefully picked the keys from his pocket. I was almost worried he was going to grab me. Well, he's quite dead, so you don't need to worry about that, pussy. There was a security camera in the room. There must have been a way to see what happened. Maybe the VHS tape I found could be useful. Maybe. Or maybe not. The world may never know. I can smell a hint of fresh air here. It must have been near an exit of some kind. But I wondered, what did that key I found on the sword worker do? And what was on the videotape I found? Oh, wait. Yeah, let's go back. That's right. There were two locked doors. Maybe this opens them. I used the keyring to unlock the door. Whoop, whoop. The shelf full of security tapes was strictly organized, though covered in dust. Looked like the tape I found was the one that was missing from the shelf. 
There was a dusty VCR on the security desk. I wonder what was on the VHS tape that I found. Did I play the tape? Yes. Jesus, the video showed a man right there in the source being attacked. The tape looked fuzzy and stretched like somebody had tampered with it. It looked like there could have been two men. I couldn't stand to watch that video again. Let's watch it again! Dick. Wait, though, there was another... Uh, let's see if we can go back to that first locked door. I don't remember. Was it this way? Oh, woo! The wall was littered with dozens of old faded papers. Whoever did this was obsessed with some of, with some local murders. According to some of the clippings, bodies had been found in ravines in the forest, and in one case, dumped in the back of an abandoned truck. I couldn't be sure, but I thought some of these same articles had also had also been pasted up back in those tunnels. A collection of stale liquor bottles covered the floor. Did that sewer worker find this room? Is that why he was killed? A faded receipt was half trampled on the floor. It was from the local train station. It was for two tickets. I didn't know what use it could be, but did I keep the receipt? Yes. I neatly folded the soiled receipt and slipped it into my front pocket. None of the other doors were locked, right? No, I don't think so. must have been the other end of that ventilation shaft. Whoever used it could have gotten past that flooded room with this. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter now. My sore leg and the extra weight I was carrying made climbing the ladder difficult. Would I need that gun or that knife before the end? I thought of that videotape still gave me chills. Who was it that... Who was it that they didn't want to be seen? Was it the same person that hid all those newspaper clippings away in that locked room? Suddenly, the awful smell of that sore gave way to the dark scent of pine trees. Hey, 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 I saw you! What the fuck is that? Really? We just. There's just a door there with a fence? So that's not odd. An old ladder leading up to the ancient water tower. The ladder needed to be extended so I could climb it. Yeah. I popped the latch and brought the ladder down. I don't know what that says. The rest of the door was locked tight with an old padlock. The faded sign on the door warned about some kind of train yard. It must have referred to the town's only train station. It didn't look like I'd be able to get through here at all. What the fuck? Every time there's a locked door, I gotta read this shit twice. It's not like I can skip it. I hate you. Hey, why can't we just shoot the fucking padlock? Let's figure out what's going on up here. In a patch of smeared dirt and grass, there was a beat-up old wallet. I thought it was mine. Yeah, okay, take it. I slid the filthy wallet into my back pocket. I noticed it didn't contain any kind of gun permit. In fact, it didn't contain any cards or ID of any kind. I thought I should recover my credit card and driver's license at least. From the railing, I could see over the woods and down to the entrance to the source. Had I come through there before? If I did, 
Someone definitely could have seen me. What do you think you did, bro? I'm gonna say somebody went flying off there. This must have been the entrance to the forest that was mentioned on that map I had seen. Whoever was poking around in those tunnels underneath that man's house had scribbled notes on this place, but I couldn't make them out. Here the sign pointed out various campsites and walking paths us in the woods. It mentioned a river and maybe a washroom, but the rest was too faded to see clearly. Oh, it's a path! I don't know what the hell that was. A dry old picnic table sat lonely amongst the trees. It had carvings and marks from years of previous campers. As I tried to read some of the names of the marks, I idly thumbed the knife I'd found in my pocket. If I wanted to, I could have carved something on that table, did I? Sure, why not? With a few crude strokes, I etched a simple design into the wood R and H. I felt like a teenager defacing the table. Yeah, who cares? The path ended in a cold-looking river. I wasn't sure if it was safe to cross like this that I crossed. Yeah, what? Two bodies, two young women, were half dug into a hasty, shallow grave between the trees. The younger-looking one was still face up, her dead eyes gleaming against my flashlight. I had no idea who these girls were. I didn't touch the gravesite, did I? Yeah, of course we're going to. I tried to arrange the bodies so their clothes covered them better. I closed the young one's eyes, shivering at the slight touch. With a few nearby sticks, I created a head marker so the police could find them later. What were these women doing out here? Probably asking too many fucking questions like you. So, this is done. Trampled into the dirt and grass was a plastic card of some kind. I brushed it off and it was and was surprised to see it was my credit card. I wasn't sure if it was still usable, but it was mine. Did I take back my credit card? I pocketed the credit card. Hopefully I could find my driver's license too. Did you kill these women? Through the fence I could see a dilapidated outbuilding. I wondered if I could find my way around. Oh. Okay, well there's clearly a door there. Why can't you walk past it? Hey, 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 I hear something. The cheap looking two person dome tent only made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Two folding camping chairs were on the ground. One was knocked over. If those poor girls were here, then they obviously ran off. There were cans of beer spilled onto the ground, and the dirt was kicked up. A few embers still burned within the fire pit. I couldn't bear to think of, the, of who this campsite belonged to. I thought of the two girls across the river and had to collect myself. No, no. Don't... something? The grimy sink had a small patch in it that looked almost clean. That's random. There was a damp smelling plank leaning against the stall door. I might have been able to cross the river with it. Uh, why not? I managed to carry the plank under my arm so it didn't get in the way. 
the stall was covered in dirt and felt this washroom obviously hadn't been cleaned in a while. But I'm, I clearly got across the river without that, so I don't see the big deal. Unless there's another river! The sign was the same as the first one I had seen. This must have been the exit to the other side of the woods. I had finally found the exit. Once I left, I knew I never wanted to return there. Oh, well, maybe I should, uh... Explore a little bit more. I oh, don't know, this is just back where I came from. And what was here? Oh, I hear something. There was some personal effects shoved back into the rock. Wait, there was a notebook there too. Did I read it? Inside the cheap dollar store notebook was page after worn page of names and lists. None of it made much sense. The newest page contained several names. Heather, Olivia, Ashley, Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose, Rachel. Rachel, her name was the last on the list and had a mark beside it in blue ink. The names Daphne and Olivia had been crossed off in the same blue ink. Cheryl, Heather, and Rose had also been crossed out, but these marks looked older and more faded. Well, I guess exploring pays off. I wish I knew where the hell I was, though. I guess there's no point in uh, looking around anymore. Through the dense trees, I could finally start to see some light. I must have been at the edge at the edge of the forest, though I wasn't sure where the path ahead of me led. I could almost feel the cryptic notebook in my pocket as I tried to think about what it could mean, and where were the campers who had abandoned their site? Would I meet them too? Though the path ahead of me was less dense, I still felt guarded and weary. Who knew what was ahead? What does he mean? Is he gonna meet those people? I, th I thought we already established that there was probably the two dead girls. They're dead. They're dead and they're not coming back. Our only hope now is to fucking see Jason Voorhees. As I stepped through the gate, I suddenly recognized the auto parts factory where I had worked as a machinist for all those years. The plant had closed almost three years ago now. Times were better than I thought I could hear a faint rustling behind me. Maybe it was just the wind. Oh, I heard something. One of the lockers hung open as contents were tossed around like someone had been looking for something. Old work clothes had been picked through and a few photos and notes had been ripped off the door and spread around. There was a large power box with five lights on it. Cables burst out of the box, shaking it off to other parts of the factory. The metal was starting to wear and cobwebs had collected on the corners. The box wasn't receiving power. The door was locked tight. It it seemed to be connected to the power box beside it. Alright, we got that. The door was locked shut and there was a little electronic box under the handle. A sign was pasted to the front that said, Danger, close for repairs. Yeah. Alright, this, this has to be a glitch that every time I come to a locked door, you have to read it twice. Every part of this plant smelled old and rotted. I noticed the old bulletin board on the wall. The board contained yellowed clippings of newspaper cartoons and notices. There were notes to and from the guys that worked here. 
One of them was to Norman, who was one of the older guys on the line. Apparently, we don't care what Norman had to say. Hmm, a power panel. Looked like it was shut off. Did I push the switch? Yes. The power panel still wasn't working. Should I switch it again? Yes. The panel seemed to be working again. Ooh, magic fingers. I opened ugh, the open locker with stuff with dirty clothes, with dirty work clothes and old boots. There was a photo of a woman taped to the inside, and it was scratched out, and the face was unrecognizable. Oh yeah, we're gonna push it. It was shut tight. There was a rusty-looking card slot on the side. All right. As long as they're green, I don't care. Our old break table, a layer of dust and grime, only made seeing this thing more. This was Norman's locker. The door was dented like someone had punched it. I don't remember him doing that when we worked there. A utility shelf crammed with mismatched tools and items. There was a claw hammer on the shelf, yes. As I took the hammer, I noticed it wasn't as dusty as the rest of the tools on the shelf. The locker was a complete mess. Hidden at the bottom, though, was a magnetic card. Did I take the card? Yes. I slipped the card into my pocket. as many times as we need to. Alright, stop. I used the hammer. The old wooden boards came apart easily. After I had removed the parts, I left the hammer on the floor. This was my locker. There in the factory. It's thank of booze. There was a picture of Rachel on the inside. It, it looked like it had been torn up. I thought I had taken that picture home when the factory closed. The floor was littered with old liquor bottles. I wondered if that man in the house had something to do with this. He sure had a lot of alcohol at his place. Well, maybe he did. The power box looked like it was running again. The door opened now that the power is back on. A rusted old regulator of some kind sat dusty and unused against the wall. Within the dust there were deep scratches like from some kind of tool or blade. Planks, tools, and broken up parts blocked any further passage. That factory was like a tomb now. It never got repaired and we never came back. Another smudge of dirt similar to the one I found in those sorts was on the floor. It didn't look like the footprints were mine, but they were probably too faint to tell. A large pile of building materials and debris blocked the way. The factory floor never did get the repairs it needed. We closed too soon for that to happen. A rack of flashlights hung on the wall. One of them was missing. My head ached terribly as I closed the door behind me and I saw the wooden the wooded path beyond the light of the factory still 
It was better than that sturdy, foul-smelling room I found. Who would have used the old locker room? Someone was obviously going up there, but it didn't make any sense. If I could reach town from there, maybe I could find Norman's store. It was close to one of the main roads. Maybe he could help. I never checked out that fence back there. Uh, a pickup had smashed into the guardrail and stood silent. Was this the truck that those newspaper clippings mentioned? Was there really a body found here? Probably not if the car's still there. Man, I saw those eyes. Was that like an owl? The garbage bin was a disgusting mess of rotten food and slick black bags. I saw a thin greenish corner poking out from one of the bags. It was my driver's license. It looked damaged. Did I take it back? Yeah. I cleaned the card off as best I could. It looked pretty beat up. I was amazed to have found my credit card and now this. I tucked the card into my wallet next to my credit card. It sounded like it was going to start raining again. Gotta send a text message. Ah. <sighs> I had entered Norman's place. This was the back of the store that he ran. It was oddly quiet except for the faint sound of a television. How the hell did we get to Norman's like I started in a house? Went down to some like S and M torture dungeon, then the sores, then some weird little tower and an abandoned factory, and then like two minutes later, I'm over here after going to Camp Crystal Lake. What the hell? One of Rachel's old autumn coats hung on the hung on a rack. That was Norman's bedroom, wasn't it? Why? What was this doing there? Oh, was Rachel cheating on you with Norman? Cause she's a whore. Inside the cabinet was a small but impressive collection of hunting rifles, shotguns, and even a few items I didn't think were legal here. One of the slots on the rack was empty. The gun I had found seemed to match the others there. If the handgun was Norman's, what the hell was he doing with it? The gun would fit there. Did I place it back in the cabinet? No. Uh, should we? Maybe we should. I don't, it's not like anybody's fucking attacking me. Eh, no, let's just keep it. Let's keep it for a little bit longer. What if Norman gets all psycho and he's actually, you know, he's actually the killer? What if I'm the killer? What if I killed Norman? I probably did, because I'm crazy. What was this? It looked like a pull chain hanging from the ceiling. I wondered where it led. Yeah. I gave the chain a single tug and a simple folding ladder to the attic popped down. Alright, we're going to go up there in a minute. The TV still flickered, some indecipherable channel. I'm assuming that this is Norman. Jesus, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Norman, my coworker, and one of my few friends I had in this town lay dead beside his armchair. His face and shirt were covered in blood. It looked like he'd been shot trying to get up. His eyes were wide with shock, though they were already drying. Norman, what was Rachel doing here? Why did you have her coat? Norman, maybe you deserve better. You probably did. Let's close his eyes. I closed his eyelids down. Shuddering as I did so, I wasn't sure if I wanted to give him peace or if I just couldn't stand to think anymore about what was going on. I'd never been to Norman's place before, at least I didn't remember ever doing so. The kitchen trash bin smelled fresh. I didn't dig through that mess, did I? Yeah, you're going to. I found a hairpin amongst the rotting food and trash and pocketed it. Yeah, nasty. Alright, uh, before I go check the attic, I actually want to run back downstairs and check out that one door. Oh, <laughs> I used the hairpin to pick the lock. The hairpin snapped in half, so I threw it away. Maybe I should go to the attic then. 
The general store was small, but it was clean. It had the usual things, postcards, snacks, magazines, and canned goods. I never went there much. Rachel usually stopped by after work if we needed anything. Alright, nipple door. We'll be back. I feel like if I don't go in the attic now, I'm going to be uh, screwed. Tucked against the wall were an old sleeping bag and a portable camping stove. The sleeping bag smelled earthy. Had it been used recently? Norman, were you in those woods? The camping stove looked newer and had a relatively fresh fuel canister locked in place. That didn't seem too safe. There was a large cardboard box that hadn't been sealed. Did I open it? Let's open it. I opened up the old cardboard box and wasn't entirely surprised by what I saw. There were more of Rachel's things, more of my wife's clothes, shoes, photos, even that old radio I gave her. Why, Rachel? What were you doing here with Norman? Is it not obvious that Rachel was cheating on you? Or maybe you're crazy and Rachel wasn't your wife. Wouldn't that be something if this guy's just actually really just tripping balls and he like had a crush on this girl, Rachel? Killed Norman to get Rachel? Maybe those bones, wait. With the back of the sun. Uh. Alright! Oh god, fucking somebody patch that shit. It's gonna drive me crazy every time I get to a locked door. The register was mostly empty and a fat stack of travel magazines sat beside it. Why do you let me read these things if they're useless? The icebox seemed to be unplugged. It must have been off for a while. Most of its contacts were half melted. Couldn't have been off for that long if they're only half melted. There were various postcards from the area, especially from the tourist traps. One of the postcards showed an old black and white photo of the water tower. It looked to be in much better shape then. That night... Ugh, that night continued to take horrible turn after horrible turn. It had been weeks since I had last seen Norman, but I was... But I to find him like that? <laughs> ah, typo! As I thought of him still lying on the floor back there, the gun I carried seemed ever-present. Seeing that dusty box of, of those old clothes was a shock. How long had they been there? And what was Rachel doing at Norman's place? I felt like I had only discovered more questions, no answers. But I was close to home. It was time to find out the truth. Ooh, you guys know I have to go explore. Ah! It was locked. This wasn't the right key. The gate was locked tight. This wasn't my house. These are oh, these are to houses. I'm assuming that this is home. Why are there just broken TVs next to garbages? The neighborhood's local post box. A letter was sticking out as if someone hadn't pushed it all the way in. Let's look at the letter. The envelope was addressed to Norman. There was no return address, but the handwriting looked familiar. I took a deep breath and tore open the package. The letter read, Norman, I'm sending this to you in a letter because I'm afraid to tell you this in person. What we did, well, it was wrong. My husband isn't an easy man to be with, but he is my husband and your friend. I need some time to sort this out away from you both. I'm going away for a while. I'm going to tell him, Norman, so don't you think you can hold that against me? I'm going to tell him and get past this. Maybe we'll work it out. I'm not sure I even want to. But he deserves at least that much. Oh, no, revelations! Okay, so my I, okay, uh, this is what I'm gonna say. So my guy most likely went a little crazy because his wife was cheating on him, killed Norman, killed a whole bunch of people, went on a bloody rampage, and now we're just making our way back. I've never played this game, but if that's what happened, oh, I'm a genius. I had entered our backyard. The rain gave me a terrible sense of foreboding, and it chilled me through my clothes. I was expectant, but also afraid. Don't be scared. What the hell is that? 
I held my breath as I approached my our backyard or back door. I was terrified to step inside. I should not be reading. The house was painfully quiet. The only sound was my own breathing, ragged and strained. I flicked the light switch by the door. The power was off. Oh yeah, because that's not weird. The table was clean. It hadn't been used any time recently. The door to the basement, it was locked. Where had I put the damned key? There was a small pile of mail on the floor in front of the mail slot. How long had I been away? Why hadn't Rachel picked this up? Most of the contents were bills. There was a credit card bill there. Did I open it? Why not? It's your mail. I ripped the bill open and read it. To my surprise, it says something about canceling my credit card due to non-payment. What the hell? How long have you been away, sir? The door was stuck shut. There was an old-fashioned keyhole underneath the handle. Ugh, yes, I know. An old photo of Rachel and me stared back at me, reminding me of better times. It didn't make me feel terribly comfortable. Why wouldn't you keep it? I replaced the photo in my wallet, feeling like I had got part of my life back. Still, the image made me uneasy. Why had I thrown it away? Our television. I had purchased it before I knew I was going to lose my job. I felt pretty guilty about it afterwards, but by then it was too late. Our hallway mirror had been smashed, its pieces scattered around the floor. Oh yeah, like you don't even care. My laptop had been left on and only had a tiny bit of power left. On the screen was a website about the old water tower. There was a key in the top drawer of my desk. Did I take it? Yeah, let's take it. I pocketed the key. How, why would you leave if... <laughs> How could he be gone long enough where stuff would be canceled for non-payment, but his laptop would survive the entire time? I mean, my laptop dies in like three hours, and that's idle. Our sink, which needed to be replaced. One of the taps always stuck, but I hadn't got around to fixing it yet. We were lucky enough to get a house with one of those wonderful old claw-footed bathtubs. What the hell is so wonderful about that? I wouldn't want that as a bathtub. Oh, that would suck too. Your bathroom's on the third floor of your house. The books were half mine, half Rachel's. Hey, now that I looked more closely, you look like that man in that house had some of the same books as I did. Were you leading a double life, Sean? My wife's Rachel's suitcase was sitting on the bed. It was closed, but I had a feeling what was in it. Inside Rachel's suitcase was a few days' worth of clothes, some personal effects, and a train ticket. As I stared... At the ticket, I could feel myself flush with anger and resentment. The date and time matched the receipt I had found. Did I even check these? I don't know anymore. Yeah. I don't remember what was locked and what wasn't. I unlocked the basement door. There were old Christmas decorations in the box. The garbage bags were stuffed with old paint cans and supplies. There was a dirty old key here. Take the key. I took the small key and tried to remember what it unlocked. Probably that door. Uh, there were old clothes, tools, and other things we obviously hadn't thrown out yet. I had put up this divider wall last summer so we could create a separate room in the basement. I had it finished yet so the door was stuck and the drywall was poorly installed. I might have been able to break through if I had found something heavy enough. Alright, so we're looking for something heavy enough now. Okay. Hmm. 
Uh, the grabbing key I found in the basement will lock the door. Whoop, whoop. It looked like the room had been tossed around. The furniture was a mess. Did somebody break in here? You broke in. You broke in your own house, crazy. There was an old crowbar on the floor. Uh, yeah, yes, you did. Alright, so I think now we can go in the basement and uh, get the drywall. The crowbar I found would have been strong enough to bust through the cheap wall. Yes, you did. With a heave, I swung the crowbar at the wall. I smashed a hole large enough to step through. As I stepped through the broken wall, my breath caught in my throat. This was it. Was Rachel down there? Was she okay? You know, she's probably fucking dead and rotted. Fucking cage or something? I don't know. What is that, jellyfish? I don't know what that says. Don't look. A filthy looking pile of rags had been dumped in the corner. The stench of them was awful and made my eyes water. I was terrified to even touch the pile to see what lay within, but I knew I had to. I had come this far. After all this searching, after all I had seen, when I looked within the rags, did I finally find my Rachel. Fuck, I don't know. I guess. Jesus. Wrapped within the filthy rags, pale and still, was Rachel. She was covered in fading bruises and what looked like cuts. Her chest was a horrible mess of blood and dirt, and I couldn't bear to look at it. I thought about all I had seen and wondered if any of it could help me figure out who done this. And when I couldn't stay there any longer, I stepped away from my sh on shaky legs and made my way back upstairs. Reluctantly, exhausted from my journey, I could no longer resist the urge to close my eyes. Maybe I would use some of Rachel's travel books and find some place to go. Yeah, well, we're not going to do that. It was my wallet. Within its, with its contact intact, either I dropped that stuff or somebody else did. Maybe I was sleepwalking it, or maybe somebody stole it from me. Norman's store, that forest, the water tower. Was I at those places before? No, there was no way that I, that was me out there. I woke up in that house, remember? I wasn't in any damn forest. This was that old photo of that other man and his wife, I assumed. I found it in that house. I recalled those faded remains I had found deep underneath his house. What had he done there? Well, what did I think? Was that man involved in this whole mess somehow? Yeah, why not? Definitely. Those tunnels, the odd tools in his house, and the remains of his wife. That He wasn't innocent, that's for sure. Within the few broken pieces that remained of that mirror, I could see my face had grown pale and weak. I couldn't bear to look again. It was like I didn't actually expect the reflection. I felt empty and drained. It was the key card I found at the bottom of that factory locker. I never did bother to use it. Somebody, someone had been going through those lockers and poking around the plant. Still, it didn't quite add up. Was I the only one who had been going back to the factory? Somebody was using that locker room, but it definitely wasn't me. I had given up drinking, remember? Oh, so I didn't, huh? The laptop had finally run out of power. I thought I did use the key card. Hmm. The reflection in that grimy glass was only a shadow, a whisper. I still love the old time charm of that call footed bathroom, though it seemed like cold comfort then. My old office safe sat on the floor. I used to keep tax records and other important documents in it. It used a digital passcode lock. Here, let's try to open it. What? Oh, 
don't know. Oh, yeah, fuck it. What? That's it? You just quit? Like, I don't know the passcode. Wait, really? Really? Cause that ain't right. Oh, if this game just played me out. No. No, we're not gonna just give up. Continue. What? Alright, you know what? Fuck it then. Uh, let's say it wasn't her. No. Well, we're just gonna pick no this time, because I don't know what happened last time. The rags were wet, matted, covered in dirt and grime, but inside that tattered mess was no sign of my beloved wife. Waitra wasn't there. I looked around in confusion, trying to figure out what to do next. If she wasn't there, where was she? <sighs> what had I been searching for this entire time? I remembered the look on Rachel's face when I came home, didn't I? Then, the awful realization hit me right in the gut. I had been looking at this the wrong way, hadn't I? Oh, snap. This is what you've been trying to tell me all along, isn't it? I couldn't find Rachel there, and I won't find her anywhere else because she was never there at all, was she? I stumbled back upstairs, and the pain in my leg, just a dull ache now, and sat down in our, my bedroom. My mind was spinning, and the ache I felt before was near, crippling. Finally, I could no longer fight the exhaustion, and as I tried to grab hold of something that would make sense of all this, I must have drifted off. Oh, so what if you say no? Maybe that, maybe the wife you found before was her. I'm guessing either way you're pretty fucking crazy. I, I guess these books were all actually mine then. Oh, so you're a nut job. It was my wallet with his contact intact. Either I dropped them or somebody else did. Norman's store, that forest, the water tower. Was I at those places before? Well, what did I say last time? No. Da, da, da. Were those really mad? Were those really his wife's remains in those tunnels? It certainly seems so. What did I think? Did the other man murder his wife and bury her in the tunnels? Yeah, probably. The sick bastard must have. What else did that mean? There, there were some questionable things in those tunnels. What else was he wrapped up in? S one M. Oh yeah, whatever. I couldn't go back down, not until I'd gone over everything. I needed to make sure I was perfectly clear. Uh, so what do I have to do? Go in every fucking room? The pile of mail on the floor I now saw was addressed to me. Bills, credit off, credit card offers, a letter from the bank. They were all addressed to me. So you never had a wife. It was a key card I found at the bottom of the factory locker. Yes, I know you did. We didn't use it. Still, it didn't quite add up. Was I the only one who had been trying to go back? No, somebody's using that locker room, but it definitely was me. I had given up drinking. Remember? Yes, yes, yes. Laptop finally died. I know not to fuck with that locker. Uh -huh. TV. I had that old TV for so long I don't know if I could ever replace it. Oh, so now, wait, now it's a new TV? 
Well, I mean, it's an older version, but uh, it's not the same one we saw before. Oh, I'm not touching the safe. I surmise that at least two of the names in that musty notebook had been recent victims. Heather, Olivia, Ashley. Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose. Four. Uh, I wonder what happened to the other names on that list or the ones scratched out on that desk in those wet tunnels. Wait, what if that's the, uh... <sighs> That's probably the code, but I didn't bother writing it down. It seemed like I had seen all there was. Maybe I thought I was ready to go back into the basement. Yeah, let's go back into the basement. I guess I was ready to face the truth now. It was the knife I had found in the source. I left it here because I didn't want it near me anymore. Was all of this my fault? Was I responsible for Rachel's death? If I was guilty, I could take this to a warm, safe place and do something about it. Did I pick up the knife? No. No, no. There were other means of dealing with this. The gun I had found in that other man's tunnel. What was he doing with it? Why had I taken it in the first place? Was this my doing? Did I bring this upon Rachel? My head began to spin with guilt and worry. If I wanted to end it, I could do it. I could do it with that gun. Let's pick up the gun. It was like carrying an anvil and I wouldn't let it go. Not again. The wall was cracked and pitted. I was told by an inspector the basement had been partially filled in before I bought the house. But by the look of that wall, I was going to need to fix the foundation. Everything smelled musty and old down here. Oh, fuck it. I sat down at the table and stared at the gun in my hand. It didn't seem so heavy this time. So, what do you think? Shouldn't I just end this misery? No. If you say so. Fuck it then, let's just finish it right now. You showed me the truth. I wasn't sure there was any reason to keep on going. So, what do you think? Shouldn't I just end this? Alright, fuck it, let's do it. Since I had arrived in town, things had been difficult. Working in the plant, though, had been good for me. It kept me in line, gave me something to do, and helped me get away from my past. When the factory closed, everything changed. I guess that was when I started sleepwalking, disappearing for hours at a time. Drinking was probably just a way to deal with that. It was almost as if I was trying to beat my brain at its own game. Things stopped making sense sometime after that. And my, and my memories of what happened are still in flux. I suppose that was when Rachel came along. This night had been the worst of my entire life. Would it even be possible to bounce back from everything that had happened, everything I'd seen, you know, in a way, I almost wish I hadn't even woken up tonight. It would have spared me a lot of pain. That man I had found in the old house had killed his wife. I was sure of it. Just as sure as I was that you killed mine. I know what you're thinking. That factory. That room with all the bottles and the old locker. You think it was me going back there, don't you? Well, I even you admitted it wasn't. Nah, grammar. So how could that be? No. Someone else must have been going there. But think, who else could have done it? I had to catch my breath to take it all in. At each point until the factory, things had only gotten worse. But then I had seen something even I wouldn't have expected. When I went to Norman's store. That's when my perspective on all of this really started to change. Norman was dead, but I had no idea what happened to him. Or what that box of clothes I had found in his attic meant. Did he know? But as painful as all of that was, oh god, I couldn't bear to think about it again. <sighs> After all I had done and seen, finally coming home was supposed to be the end to this entire ordeal.
God help me, though. It was only the beginning. The gun was heavy, but felt right. Felt correct in my hand as I sat at that table. Rachel was dead, you know, and you killed her. She was real enough to me before you came along. But I guess this is... This is what has to happen. After all, you're the one calling the shots around here. Whatever. Well, that was, um, different. So I don't think it was a bad game. Uh, I probably want to play through it a little more and just see like if anything affects the outcome. Well, I mean, I'm sure that the outcome is always going to pretty much be the same. I, I mean, I guess it's going to vary a little bit depending on whether you picked that you found Rachel or you didn't. But I want to... I want to play. Th I'm probably gonna play through it a couple more times and just see w like what happens. Like, would it matter if I put the gun back or I didn't? You know, f let's say f let's say I never crossed the river because I didn't use the plank. Like what ha You know what I mean? Like like what happens if I didn't like? Like what happens if I didn't keep the gun and I put it back or stuff like that? Like I wonder if it. I wonder if it really, honestly matters because some of it didn't seem like it mattered. I mean, what would have happened if I went and I got like in that room with the key card that I I must have overlooked or if I went through that first fence before the door. So, I mean, I I might play around a little bit with that just to see um what consequences there are for certain things, although it seems like the outcome is probably just going to remain the same with the only uh with the only real difference being the choice you make in the basement. Uh I'll probably check out that safe at some point, too. Not that I think it's going to matter much. I, I bet you it's like the first letter of all the girls' names on that list, but I I didn't even think I didn't even think to remember what it was. But, I don't know. Either way, seems like your dude's crazy. But, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Overall, for uh, $3, I think it's a pretty good game. So, you know. I would uh, recommend that you all, for three bucks, I, I would say you should you should definitely buy it, check it out, or wait for it to be on sale, you know, whatever you guys want to do, but anyway, I'm out.